week the vlog is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. If you're like me, you feel like a criminal when you go and buy razor blades that keep them behind the cash register or that part of the store where the, the razor blades are on a pin and you turn the dial and they come off the big spring and they make noise as you turn them. Did you ever see this? It's time to try out Dollar Shave Club. For a limited time offer, Dollar Shave Club is basically giving away their hit shower and shave starter set to new members for only $5. This starter set features their executive razor and three trial size versions of their most popular products that help you stay fresh and clean. In your first box, you will receive their shea butter, body wash, and one wipe Charlie's butt wipes. You will also receive their executive razor, which includes their premium weighty handle and full cassette of cartridges. After the first box, replacement cartridges are sent for only a few bucks a month. This offer is exclusively available at dollarshaveclub.com forward slash Jimmy J. Dollar Shave Club's high quality products will have you covered from face cheeks to butt cheeks. There's no better time to join the club. Who's got time to go to the store? Dollar Shave Club delivers it directly to your door. Thank you for joining me. The Push the Button Project this week. Above and Beyond is a group of DJs out of Europe and I was asked by Barclay Center to make a gift two days before the show. I knew we were gonna do something for the show, but I was in Chicago, one thing led to another, and suddenly I was back with only two days left. They have this thing, people come to the show with signs that say push the button. This graphic, this actual piece of plastic, this shape, was my design. They basically said, using the term push the button, can you come up with something? And if they push the button, what could happen? Simplest thing with a lot of time, was to have a light go on. They seem really happy with it. It was a green room gift, so it's kind of tongue in cheek. There's not too much pressure on a job like this because I'm just having fun to create some smiles. And it went over really well. I was told they really liked it and they brought it out on stage. I didn't see it, I wasn't there. This was an actual paid job. A lot of people ask me, why do I use plastic? Plastic's easy, simple, and it's precise. And it's not that expensive. Really, it's not. The first 100 woodcut posters went for sale yesterday, I think, or the day before. I'm not sure if there's any left, but there will be more, I promise. There'll be more of everything. In this video, you'll see I got a big giant CNC, and what I want to do is make some exclusive push sticks. But in case you want some of my original push sticks, they are available. The graphic is floating around somewhere. You can get the graphic in CNC or 3D print your own as some people have done here. But if you want to buy one for me, they're available at the store. I will be making some exclusive ones on the new CNC. More fun this week with the full spectrum laser, I made this wallet. I never know which side of the wallet my idea is on, so I had this idea to make this fishnet wallet. And it's okay, it's not great. The good thing is I could just make another one and keep experimenting, and that's what I'm gonna keep doing. Eight ounce veg tan leather from Tandy Leather. I have no deal with them, but that's where I get leather. Just having fun. I'll make some more interesting, fun, different stuff. But that's my fishnet. And then the, you can see the stitch is just kind of hand, just looped around. Building update, it's been sub-zero cold in upstate New York, so everything's been kind of put off, waiting for the weather to break a little bit. The next is gonna be the electric. That is the very next step. I'm working on some electrical quotes. We're gonna run a 300 foot cable from the pole to the barn. I'm gonna put in a 400 amp service. That's the plan. And we're gonna get some quotes and see how that goes. And then the next step is the sub-panel, lighting, electric, so on and so on and so on. And once I pull the trigger on that, it seems like it'll happen fairly quickly. So, electric is next. A big thank you to Andrew Alexander. He is Blacksmith Tools on Instagram. He and I have become friends. We've been talking a lot lately. 
and he has an incredible collection of cool old stuff. Mostly blacksmithing, but anything cool and industrial he gets his hands on somehow. Amazing stuff. He shared some of it with me. Andrew, thank you. He even gave me his old boots because he knows I like to collect old cowboy boots. Andrew, you put a big smile on my face. Thank you. Big thank you to Lindsay, Iman, and Mike. Thank you for this mail. I really appreciated the beautiful sketch of Chippy. Mike sent me a mount. You could put a trim router on it and then you could mount that trim router into a lathe tool holder. You can use the cutting head of the router and put it into a piece of material on the lathe. I talked about it in the last vlog. I got a big giant shop bot. The guys came this week, put it together and to train me. And I thought the origin story of shop bot was pretty interesting. So I asked him to talk a little bit about that. Richard Hill, lead developer at Shopbot Tools for internal systems, also help with training, also jack of many. Chris Burns, I, I am, uh, but I am one of the Shopbot road warriors that uh, does installs, trains on the road. Been a part of Shopbot since uh, since way back in the day. In fact, I was the first full-time employee there. Around 98 or so. And uh, it was started by um, by Ted Hall, who was at the time a, um, a professor at Duke University. And Ted wanted to build a darn plywood boat. In fact, he came up with a, um, a program and wrote a program called Boat Design that actually creates what's called called a developable hull. And he went out shopping for a CNC, and even the used uh, CNC machines at the time were tens and tens of thousands of dollars. You really couldn't find one up for under 50 grand at the time. He looked at the, the CNCs and he said, oh, well, all it is is a darn three-axis plotter. He prototyped the original in uh, plywood with uh, Z-axis drawer slides and actually debuted it at the uh, in North Carolina at the Triangle Woodworkers Association. Ted shows up and is like, well, I was tinkering in the barn and I came up with a three-axis CNC machine and it worked. That was the start. And Shopify was truly the first low-end disruptor in into the field of CNC. The new version of V-Carve that comes with the ShopBot gives you the ability to do two-sided carvings. As a quick example, I thought of the Hellraiser box. So we went quickly online, got some of the graphics from the Hellraiser box. But the idea was to make a two-sided thing. It was really more of an exercise in the two-sided thing. And the, the cut of the graphics was going to take too long, so we, we aborted that but flipped it over to see if the cut would work for just making the six-sided box, at least in this simple configuration. And it works amazing. You could do this and you have your registration pins, you flip it over and you get the other side. And the software gives you the ability to make both cut paths that are going to match. This is a really cool file. It is part of the training exercise from ShopBot. It is a chair. It's a pretty classic design. It's nothing groundbreaking. The two parts plug together, and then when they unplug, they nest together so you could store it. So it is a folding beach chair, and it's made out of just a, a small portion of a sheet of plywood. And with, uh, with good nesting capabilities, you can probably get three chairs out of, a, out of one full sheet of plywood. And that's what's gonna be great, is I'll be able to process full sheets of plywood. 
into design concepts of whatever. The only limitation is my imagination. And at the end of the training, I challenged Chris, my teacher, to see if he could make a two-sided file that would become this axe handle. And I had the, the white plastic axe handle, which I plan on making an aluminum one day. He was up for the challenge and we figured it out. We made a couple of mistakes, but not so many that we didn't get results. We got this pretty good handle. It needs a little handy work from me, but ultimately, I think we could figure this one out. Wanted to remind everybody in February, February 22nd, the weekend of, I will be at Workbench Con. There's a few tickets left. There's going to be a link in the description. Go to Workbench Con. It's going to be in Atlanta. It's a big influencer convention. It's going to be me and a lot of other YouTubers are going to be there. So even if you're just hanging around the bars in the area, wherever it's going to be, you're probably going to bump into some of us. So check out Workbench Con. And like I said, the tickets I think are going to be on sale. So there'll be a sales price for the tickets. But check the website for more exact details. And if you come, you're gonna meet me and a lot of other people. And Maker Central in May. Maker Central in Birmingham, England. I just booked my hotel, so I'm committed now. Birmingham, England, May 4th, 5th, 6th, something like that. Check the link in the description and go to England. I will see you in Birmingham, England. Please support my sponsor, Dollar Shave Club. They help tremendously. Keeps me working in the shop and working on the new maker space. So thank you, Dollar Shave Club, and thank you for watching. I appreciate it very much.